Hi, and welcome to The Leslie Show. We've got a really fun show for you today. But first, I have to let you in on some family business of mine. I probably shouldn't really be talking about, but my husband, he is something else. He is a snorer, and I, I am sleep deprived because of him. Three, four o'clock in the morning, he's... <laughs> Oh, my God. I said, you know what? You need to do something about this, man. You need to go to the doctor because I am not sleeping. So the next day he goes to the doctor. He comes home, and I go, well, what did the doctor give you? And he goes, the doctor gave me a pair of earplugs so I don't need to listen to your bitching and moaning all night. And then I told my friend about it. And I said, Dale, you know, I don't know what to do about this. It's, ah, I'm not getting any sleep. And he said, well, why don't you have your husband, you know, lie on his side? And thank you very much, Dale, because that did work. Uh, a half hour of trying to turn his big fat butt over. I was so exhausted. I slept better than I've ever slept all night. So thanks, Dale. Anyway. Probably going to get shot when I get home, but anyway. Our guest today is Eden Bailey, and she is phenomenal. She is from the PCPA Theater, and she's going to talk about what it's like at the PCPA, what it's like being an actress. So stay tuned. <laughs> Woo, Eden Bailey. Welcome to the Leslie Show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. Eden is from the PCPA, and she's here to talk all about being an actress. So um, tell us, how did you get started with acting? Were you like me? I mean, as a little kid, I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. I think just coming out of the womb, I was like, I love the stage. Were you like that as a kid? or I think uh, as far back as I can remember, I've loved playing pretend. So very much so. And um, I think entertaining comes along with that because um, kind of go hand in hand. But um, I've been singing for a yep, since a very young age. Um, and acting didn't really come into my life until I was a freshman at Orchid Academy, and I got involved with the theater productions um, done with Orchid Union School District, and that really kind of like propelled me from there. Like I'm going to be an actress; I can't do anything else. I fell in love with it. I tried so many things before too, like uh, ice skating, gymnastics, horseback riding, soccer, like you name it. Like I tried like everything, but it, acting is, and performing the one thing that really stuck for me. Okay, so you sing and you dance and you act, right? Yes. All three. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm interested in hearing about the PCPA theater. Now, was mm -hmm. it difficult to get into that? Like, did you start out at all at the Santa Maria Civic Theater or, mm -hmm. and then yeah, or absolutely. How, what, how did it work there? Well, um, I did actually start at the Santa Maria Civic Theater. I did Steel Magnolias with them before I got in. I was in process of auditioning when um, I was doing that show, and it was crazy because I found out. I was playing Shelby at the time, too, and I was like, oh, my gosh, after this, I get to go to PCPA, and it's going to be great. But, um, yeah, it was really hard um, getting in. They take uh, 32 um, students normally, 16 boys, 16 girls, and they get about um, 500 uh, applicants every year around. So it's very competitive. Um, Eric, our casting director, goes up and down um, the central coast, uh, up and down the state of California, actually. Um, yeah, we have people from everywhere. Our <laughs> our student, who I think is for the farthest away, is um, his name's Alex. He's from Argentina. Oh so. My. Yeah, all walks of life. So people come from all over the world, not just the country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, my goodness. So you're saying 16 out of 500 people you were chosen? Yes. <laughs> so wow. Very, very. It was so intense, and the, just the whole process of it, it was. It was so fun, but very, very competitive to get in, and it was well worth it. I mean, it has been absolutely amazing. It's. I'm due to graduate here in May, and it will have been two years and two of the best years of my life so far. Absolutely. Well, what are they looking for? You said, okay, 16 out of 500 people. What are they looking for? Are they looking for mm -hmm. the way you use your voice or just your acting skills, your dancing? What, what does it take to be 16 out of 500 people? <laughs> I think it, it's a lot of things. Um, definitely singing, dancing, acting. If you have all of those, then you're already a step above. But I think more so PCPA is a community um, that really cultivates um, growth, learning, and acceptance. And they want to work with people, in my experience, who also um, have those attributes and values. So it's not just, um, I would say, a traditional, very competitive theater school. Um, we They're selecting an ensemble. So when they're casting those 32 people, it's 32 people that they want to have chemistry and build a class with and 
the people they want to spend two years with. So yeah. I, I almost feel like it's a bit about a personality as well, just making sure like you have an upbeat attitude. They want people who are excited about theater and excited about making art. And so, yeah, definitely that. <laughs> okay. Well, what plays have you been in so far? Well, um, last year I started off doing um, a play based on Willa Cather's My Antonia with a uh, Polly Firestone Walker was directing that. And I got to play um, several parts in it. It was, it was a conservatory project. Um, but then I was on the main stage um, on the Marion in Roger Delorier's The Crucible. Oh. And that was absolutely um, an amazing uh, just show to work on. He, his direction and his vision is just so beautiful and the way he really like wants to tell a story. And in that show, I got to play one of the girls in the court. So I got to scream my head off oh. and see things that were there. And I understudied Mary Warren as well. And since a after that, uh, oh gosh, it's been quite a bit. So over summer, I did two shows with Central Coast Shakespeare. I did The Three Musketeers and I played Queen Anne. And then I also did, um, oh gosh, I'm totally blanking on the name. Shakespeare, save me, as well. Oh, it's the one with um, <laughs> Orlando and Rosalind. So that one, okay, <laughs> I got okay. to play um, Hyman, who's the goddess who marries everyone at the end. As you like it. Sorry. Okay. I've got a little brain fart working on so much Shakespeare right now. <laughs> and um, since I've been back, I got to work on um, this show that I produced with a friend. Um, I would costume designed it and he adapted, um, it's called Low. So he adapted this um, stage adaptation from the movie and it's a... Um, a demon play. It's about oh. a guy whose girlfriend gets kidnapped by a demon and goes to hell. Oh, geez. It's very intense. So <laughs> I costume designed that show and also acted in that. Um, I have done a lot, various other projects as well, but um, that's what I've been working on so far. I have more coming soon. <laughs> Quite you, a bit. <laughs> well, do, you, do you have a favorite type of play that you'd like to be in or, or do you like to be in maybe really kind of dark shows mm -hmm. and then upbeat comedies or do you have a favorite or? I think definitely the classics right now. I'm very much enjoying um, Anton Chekhov, um, that Russian era, very like moody, um, all this subtext going on. But also like Tennessee Williams, I really enjoy working on, um, Streetcar Named Desire. Um, that's actually playing at the Santa Maria Civic Theater right now. Oh. I'm not in it, but okay. <laughs> um, stuff like that. I, um, Arthur Miller, The Crucible. Um, so I do enjoy the classics. I think there's so much to be gained from that, that yeah. can be applied to modern theater and contemporary works that um, I think is looked over a lot, yeah. but the classics for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, are you a person, I know I've met a lot of different actors and actresses and I've read people that can just get a script and they have it all memorized once or twice and other people have to read it over and over. Are you pretty quick at learning the lines or? So I... I am very quick at learning the lines, oh. much to the chagrin of my classmates, because it can be a bit annoying. Um, oh, wow. Not <laughs> in the terms you might think, but uh, last year in class, we would often do scene work in front of each other, and I just got a propensity for memorizing by hearing everyone do their scenes, so I would just recite their lines to them oh, in the geez. hallway oh, my <laughs> just randomly because I would hear it and so I just pick it up but I memorize very quickly I have very good auditory memory oh, that's good just gets in there very fast so great career benefit <laughs> yeah definitely mm -hmm. well what about have you had any challenges as an actress oh gosh I mean <laughs> there's always challenges um I think with PCPA, it's really challenged me to be more disciplined. Um, they're such a structured company and they demand so much of their actors that you really have to be all in or not in at all. And it's really made me take my craft more seriously, whereas before maybe I would have been a little bit more schoolgirlish about it. I was going from high school theater to um, community theater with Sam Civic Theater to a very professional company. So um, my standards really had to be raised very, very fast. And I'm still, it's a constant struggle of making sure I'm always being my best because I can't falter. <laughs> well, what would be the difference of being at, say, the Santa Maria Civic Theater versus mm -hmm. the PCPA? Like, do they expect, like, okay, you have to be there exactly 7 o'clock, not 7.05. If you're five minutes late, you're in trouble. You better mm -hmm. have the lines learned by one week or I mean what what are some of the differences yes um definitely the time um they're very strict about scheduling you need to be on time or it is um very much show an issue it's also because we are students as well as company members um there's a lot more of a workload so let's say I have class from 9 to 4 30 um six days a week and then also rehearsals from 6 30 to 10 30 at night so oh. um 
oh, that was when I was doing the crucible. Basically, it was um, all school all day, a rehearsal all night, and then go home and figure out a way to do your homework and go to sleep. <laughs> but um, it, it's just very intense time. It's a big commitment, but if you're willing to commit, then it's, it's oh. well worth it. But I think the time thing is the biggest difference, just so much time. Yeah. I bet. So from nine to four, you're strictly learning. It's basic acting, right? It is. So. Yeah, it is. Um, we do based on the Stanislavski method, which is um, acting by action, acting by doing, um, which is, but it's all of our classes intertwine into acting, but we do stuff like voice and speech where we do dialects. And right now we're working on our P, which is the British dialect. We just closed out that unit. It was quite fun. And now um, we're going to be working on teaching each other dialects. There's classes like that. We have our dance classes, which are super fun, where we're learning musical theater styles and different numbers. Um, our singing classes, we work on different um, singing numbers right now. We're doing, um, I'm working on a song from Chorus Line at the Ballet with two other of my classmates. So it, it's everything um, tied together basically wow. equals the acting thing. But we do have traditional acting classes as well. How fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you're finished with the school then? Do you do you have aspirations to become a famous actress? Or oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you want to do? Because you said you graduate in June, is that right? May, yeah. Or May, sooner yet, OK. Uh, sooner yet, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a lot of big, big plans, but um, what my, plan right now is to go to Cornish College of the Arts. We have that audition coming up. And um, that's a school in Seattle. And it's a great um, school to transfer to. We have a really good relationship with them. And I have a lot of other classmates that are there. And um, I love Washington State. I grew up there. So to be able to go oh. back would be really nice yeah. just because it's so beautiful. But um, if that doesn't work out because, you know, things happen, um, I have a multitude of auditions for companies um, coming up and we get to do that through school. Um, just had a couple auditions actually the other week um, for you? things. Uh, I, could, uh, I would like to work with um, a summer company, um, maybe like out of the area. We have a lot of things up in the air right now, but um, definitely continuing school is a big plan for me. I would love to graduate with my Bachelor's of Fine Arts and then transfer and maybe get a master's or um, my teaching credential because that is like long term what we're looking at. <laughs> so long term you want to be a teacher, is mm -hmm. that right? I okay. think after I uh, do the thing, <laughs> go out, um, work, give it my all, I would love to return to teaching. Especially I think PCP has made me appreciate um, how much uh, working actors can really give because all of our teachers are working actors. They're all employed by the theater. So they're all still doing shows. And I think having uh -huh. the guidance of someone who's had experience in the field has helped me um, profoundly. Okay. I would love to give back in that way. Well, what about, have you thought about actually going to New York City or maybe San Francisco where you, there's oh, big productions? Or? Absolutely. We just um, had a workshop with Faith Prince, who is um, Adelaide on Broadway. And um, she was just absolutely amazing um so she spent all this time in new york was giving us all this life experience and um natasha mm. house was also there um they too were like giving advice to conservatories and whatnot about how to really go out there and do <laughs> do the thing again right. for lack of a better word yeah um and so she talked about going to new york and uh, the actor should go to new york and um that is something i would love to do uh it's just about when the opportunity presents itself or making that opportunity happen, I think right now, um, I would, if someone offered me a plane ticket to go, I'd go right now and figure it out. But um, we'll see. New York is always, I think, every actor's dream to really go there and give it a shot because why why wouldn't you why wouldn't you is right mm -hmm. yeah i have these talent shows every year this i have my six talent shows called leslie showcase of talent where we have all different singers and actresses and dancers and um she won the second prize and so that's why she's on the show today but i think why she won was she just could project herself that after the showcase, people were talking like, my God, that girl was just so good. So, Thank you. Um, Thank I mean, you very she, much. everybody else needed a microphone except for you. <laughs> and so you, you're really, really outstanding at projecting you. yourself. Thank is you there, so much. is there advice you could give to people that learning, that are learning to be actors? Because I've noticed a lot of people, they just can't get their voice to do that? Do you think it's innate or was it something you had to work at to get there? Or? I think I just, I never tried to make a big sound before the first time that I did. And I think I just was given permission 
by myself to go there and really be loud. I think um, giving advice to anybody who is maybe struggling with their voice or wants to project more because I can be very loud is just be yourself, really just to own it. Like you just go there. Don't be afraid to mess up because if you are, then you're not ever going to take that step because you're always going to be scared. You just got to be okay with sounding bad. Yeah. When I practice, sometimes I just sound not right, (laughs) but but if I never did that, then I wouldn't be able to go where I can when I do sound right. So really just trusting yourself. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is and singing or just in life in general, it's totally has helped me. I know. I think if you're so worried about being perfect, what if I'm not perfect? What if Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect? Then you're not going to do anything because who's perfect all the time. So I think that's really good advice. Just say, okay, well, it wasn't perfect, but next time it's going to be better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, nobody's perfect. Failures are learning opportunities the way I see it. It, I've spent too much time thinking about like, oh, I got to be perfect. And now it's just like, oh, let it go. Like, let it yeah, all Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But what else, what other type of advice would you give people? Because I know there's a lot of people out here that would love to audition for the PCPA, but oh, they're yeah. too afraid. Or mm-hmm. what? what is the main thing they're looking for that, that puts you into the X factor? Because like you said, 16 out of 500 people, you were chosen. So... Yeah. What what would be three things that you would tell them to work on? Three things. Um, the biggest thing I think that they look for, and honestly, anybody in a show business that like I would want to work with is just looking for truth and authenticity. Um, there's such a distinction between when someone's being themselves and they're not, and I think that it can be a deterrent. You know. Um, so when they're acting, you're saying don't overact. Just play the part just, naturally. Just be, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's you and the circumstances. It's it's you, it's you as the character. It doesn't have to be anybody else. It, you can just be yourself. I think that it can be a, a trope to fall into that acting is to be or not to be, but it's, it's to be or not to be. Like, yeah. it, it's you and the work. Um, number two, try to just, <laughs> oh, this is a huge one have fun. Like if you're not having fun, why are you there? You need to have yeah. fun. I, I feel I like that, that and everything like with auditions. I think if I'm not having fun, why am I not having fun? This is what I do. I audition <laughs> or I just, as my acting teacher, um, Eric Stein would say, um, no caution. You just got to go in and really give it your all. Yeah. No fear or anything. Um, and I'm, so, so the thing is that the PCPA, you guys are getting some serious business done, but you're having fun be- behind the scenes. People are having a good time, enjoying themselves. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is really rough sometimes when um, the things stack up, you know, and we're all still students at the end of the day. So it can be hard. But despite all of that, it's always a fun environment. And there's the community that um, I feel like me and my classmates have cultivated together and make it so that we can have fun in our work. And we're doing it to have fun. <laughs> like, That's great. Absolutely. Yeah. And what would the third, the third, the third thing, thing be? I think um, this is kind of hard, but if you know, you do really want to pursue a career in, in show business or acting or anything. If you can see yourself doing anything other than that, then go do that because it's not for everybody. It's hard. It's really hard. And if you need to ask yourself, can I do anything other than act or sing? No, then I guess that's what I'm going to do. But yeah. if there is a thing like, oh, I could be a nurse or I could be a teacher, then go do that because that's easier. <laughs> that's much, right, much right. easier. So, so basically you have to have the heart for it. You really do. Yeah. <laughs> Feel it in your heart. Yeah. The passion. Well, I'm getting the signal here that we're just about out of time, but um, I know you're going to be singing a song for us. So I am. I'm looking forward to that. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show. You've, oh, been, you've you. been fun. And I'm sure when people hear this, they're going to be inspired. Oh, I hope so. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so amazing. My first TV experience. Yay, so. this is great. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you very Eden. much. Thank you. And we get to hear her sing now. Yay. Murray. I am out here, Murray. And I'm not discussing this anymore. You don't want to buy me the fur, but well, that's just fine, Murray. It's not like I'm asking for much since you won't buy me the dog or the beach house and quark. I think you didn't have any money. 
what else is new? I'm not gonna fight for a coat, so never mind, Murray. If that's what's important to you, at least I know where I stand. So Murray, strike up the band, because the time has come for action. Here's what I'll do. Clearly, I'm not wanted anymore. Now I'm not so young and beautiful. That's okay, I faced a feat before. I'm not gonna convention, I'm not gonna cry, because it's not gonna get me what I wanted, so I'm simply gonna take one step, one tiny step, and Murray, just one step, I'll be free. One small step, honey, you better hurry. Oh, yes, sir, better move up. That fur taken from me, old Murray. Watch me. You think this is maybe a joke? Well, it's no joke, Murray. It looks like you're forming a crowd like 85 at the most. Still front page of the post, ma. I think it's Maury Povich. And Connie, too. Oh, hi, Connie! And now you'll finally make your mother proud. Since she never liked me anyway. Look, she's throwing diamonds to the crowd. Just say the word and I'll come back inside. But until then, I'll be happy. Just know that I can always go and take one step, one tiny step. And Murray, just one step. Adios. One small step, honey. You better hurry. Oh, yes, sir. Better give up that fur taken from me. Old Murray, here I am. Whoops. Almost fell, Murray. The mother of your children splattered across Fifth Avenue in a bloody heap, Murray. And it's all your fault. Because it's you who made, you made the money. And it's you who owns the store. So if you don't want to spend it, that's your right. But it's you who bought the penthouse on the 57th floor. So good night, cheapskate, good night. You think I don't know about her? Well, I do, Murray. You think I don't know about that? Or the things that you say to your friends every day. Embarrassing, fat, demanding, or whatever. Perhaps it's true. Here's the place where I get what I've earned. Why keep crying? Why be miserable? Look at him, Murray. Somebody's concerned. Trust in the wind and I'll land in the crowd. No more complaining, I'm trashy or loud. Why is this day so freaking experience? Finally, Murray, I'm getting attention and just one step. Look at where one step leads you. One small step takes you high. One small step down from the man who leads you. Screw the fur, just send it down to her. So fairly well and Murray. time and stay tuned next because we have an extra special guest and I'm not even going to tell you who it is because it's a surprise. All right, have a great week and never let anyone take your mojo. Woo! Have a good one. <laughs>